hundreds of five minutes is difficult. Um, here basically you see a picture of uh, when it all started. Uh, my well was drilled in 2005, my water well. 2000, uh, September 2009, main resources drilled approximately underneath my house, about a mile down, but is uh, we noticed problems and then actually we thought our well went dry. Pack spell service came up, took this picture, and said it's gas locking, and this is where it started. Called everyone, uh, uh, found out the railroad commission uh, was responsible for coming out. Railroad commission, uh, the range resources, uh, these are actually pictures here of my water on fire and the vent on fire. The vent's always open. Over, these are all pictures. That's a water truck delivering my water. These are pictures over the last five years. Uh, they're actually in date order. So you can see it's like Old Faithful. Water lights, vent lights every time. Anyone's more than welcome to come out and view it for themselves. So they call it hoax. Um, range resources, basically when they did the testing in 2011, you can see on here, they said the results showed that my water is safe to drink and there's no danger in my home. But if you look at page two here, they say that in my headspace, that's a foot down, two feet down from the vent that they also claim has a zero rating, has almost 500,000 parts per million of methane. That's 10 times explosive limits, uh, like again, going back to Henry's law, that's impossible. Their math doesn't add up. Second of all, again, another letter from them, basically going to my attorney saying that water well safe and I can use it. Again, in the Railroad Commission hearing, they also talked about faults. A great area is my area. They said there's absolutely no faults in my area. This documentation all here is decades before they drill. I have other evidence another company left the area because of the faults and would not even drill. In 2014, this is the uh, uh, Railroad Commission came back in again. This is the company who did the testing for them. If you see here, I zoomed in, and it says that um, that uh, one of the reasons they did this test the way they did it is because uh, my water well was significantly effervescent to use this method. Okay, we all know that effervescing means it is, <clears throat> if you look on here, dissolved method, this is actually from the OSGS, that it has reached saturation. Reaching saturation, again, means it has to be a minimum of 28 milligrams per eagle, liter, and this is again the same point that it will light on fire, and this is the point also that um, you need, again, you have some, uh, basically some serious uh, risk here. But you know, my water, again, has to be at least over 28. We have done testing with Duke University, it's an isotech, but it ranges here between 50 and 70. Some of the highest readings they said they ever got in any residential well. Um, this actually here is, again, from the Railroad Commission, this is very smithering. We had given the Congress in June 6, 2012, saying that I attempted to extort $6.5 million in range. Again, this is another one from David Porter in 2014 saying everything in Mitchellinski is uh, completely fraudulent stunts. Okay? Testimony that they're giving and no one's saying anything about it. And what I want to get to next is the OIG report. Basically what they have here is they're saying that Region 6, I mean, uh, they had a, re a reason to issue the first order because it was real, they felt range did it. But they also had a reason to withdraw it. And that is that, uh, number one, that they could, uh, the cost factor, I mean, they couldn't take on industry. I mean, how can I? Uh, two is that uh, they uh, reduce it because they're saying basically I hooked up my own water supply so it's no longer at risk. Three is range cities uh, agreed to participate in a study, which they didn't. And four is they agreed to test 20 water wells in Parker County for three months, all but mine. No testing of mine afterwards. Again, at this point, um, I'm done. I don't know what to do. Uh, the rare, I feel that the EPA abandoned me. Um, I'm being sued by range resources for saying that they did it. Well, I thought they did. I mean, I was told by my government they did. Um, and at this point, I'm being called a hoax, a liar, and that my water is safe. And EPA has not come back and confirmed that if they're correct or not. At this point, I have no choice. I'm not crazy. I am going to go ahead December 1st and hook the water back up to my house. I feel that either the EPA will have to legally, if they feel there is a problem, step in and do something about it. Uh, if they don't, that tells me that they feel that they did make a mistake in the issue of this emergency order, and the industry and the road commission is correct. And again, I just want to move on with my life. I don't want to come here again. I don't want to be here today. This has ruined my life for the last five years. It ruins my family's life. And again, I just want to move on. Uh, I don't want to ever come back here again. And again, um, I just like to get this over with. And if my water's safe, then we'll move on and we'll see what happens. If it's not, um, I'll do what I can to protect my family, but range research, I mean, the uh, EPA, again, uh, if they think there's something wrong with the water, they need to step forward and do something about it. And again, if not, they need to apologize to me, the River Commission, and range resources for letting this all start in the first place. Um, again, um, I'm being paid to say my water does not light on fire. Anyone can come down at any time, it does. And actually here, I'll show you one thing I forgot to show you. They
this is a fab, this is just taken four days ago. This is actually video footage of a water jug of my water group just putting in. And this would be the same thing if I, I believe it would be in my shower. If, because I have a small shower with the door closed. This is just the water lighting on fire. I mean, this is, uh, it's not a moment. You can come and see it. I know thank my time is up. Your time is expired. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Woods. I hope you will never be here. Our next speaker is Mr. Fenton. <coughs> I'm tired of being here too. 
I always wanted to bring my children to Washington, D.C. and show them around and, and give them an idea of what this country was founded on. And quite frankly, that's the last thing I want to do now. I've completely lost faith in the system. This has to be more inclusive with the people who are directly impacted, not just the people who are making profit from this. Thank you, Mr. Fenton. Our next speaker is Mr. Davis. He's unable to attend. Our, Mr. Davis is not here. Our next speaker is Mr. Stevens. situation. 
They're in massive debt and are on the verge of collapse, laying off workers. Who do you think is going to be stuck cleaning up this mess? It is health that is real wealth, not pieces of gold and silver. Gandhi. The only thing necessary for the triumph of evil, of evil is for good men and women to do nothing. Sir Edmund Burke. Please use the science included, uh, including your own agency's investigations in the three communities across the country where water was contaminated and share the truth what is going on in this industry across the country. The EPA will be doing its job. Uh, last thing I'll say, Martin Luther King, on some positions, cowardice asked the question, is it safe? Expediency asked the question, is it politic? Vanity asked the question, is it popular? But conscience asked the question, is it right? This is not right, you all know it, and we're tired of generational suicide. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Stevens. Our next speaker is Mr. Goff. This was not about money. 
We got $7.50 an acre. I wanted the free gas because I was going to build a new house. I had Dr. Poole's. Here's his car, which I'm sure you're familiar with. Him. He came to Washington County. I rented a library, a citizen's library, from 3 o'clock until 8 o'clock that evening. I had people coming in with their water results. I had him to a couple different forums early on. I showed him pictures of the dead cattle. He's just looking at him, shaking his head. He stated at the end of that meeting, folks, I have heard the same scenario in every state that I have been in. Then he started naming the states, Colorado, Texas, Arkansas. I've heard the stories of the people being sick, the people losing livestock, the water wells being contaminated, or springs. It's the same scenario. And then he stated, this warrants enough of evidence today that warrants us to come in to investigate. First year goes by, nothing. The second year goes by, nothing. Just, what, two months ago you released the study? Folks, I'm going to tell you right here and right now, I've had it to hear, I'm ready to die, because you've pushed me too far. The range has pushed me too far. Lawyers have destroyed my case. I'm with my third law firm. Mr. Gola, your time has expired. <laughs> Do your job, folks. Thank you, Mr. Gola. Our next speaker, this will be the last speaker before we break for lunch, is Mr. McMillan. <laughs> Process. Uh, I'm an applied mathematician and computational scientist. I'm well versed in the methods employed to model the very simplistic contamination scenarios considered in the assessment. I look forward to that discussion tomorrow. Uh, after serving as a AAAS Congressional Fellow in the U.S. Senate, uh, I joined Food and Water Watch as a senior researcher. Uh, I'm concerned about the integrity of this process. And I believe you, as, as uh, scientific advisors, should be as well. Um, as you must be aware, current U.S. energy policy uh, equates, effectively equates, widespread fracking with energy security in this country. Um, this is in lockstep with the interests of both the oil and gas industry and the investment banks that own the fracking industry's debt. Um, there's, there's no doubt that this alignment of policy considerations has, has shaped the assessment. Uh, certainly it's telling that the EPA abandoned its investigation from Dimmick Pavilion in Parker County, that it excluded these cases of contamination from the assessment, and that it refers to the impacts people have suffered, as you've heard today. It refers to these impacts as vulnerabilities, uh, as if the harms were just hypothetical and, and not being lived every day by thousands. Um, to those who've been harmed, this is very insulting. Um, and any assessment ought to include these cases of, of contamination, specifically in Demick Pavilion and, and Parker County. Uh, the EPA's reliance on the voluntary cooperation of industry for access to data and well sites is likewise telling, and it's likewise shaped the science in the assessment. The fact that untold numbers of cases are hidden in sealed court settlements to further Further shape the science. Uh, in, in their 2008 book, Bending Science How Special Interests Corrupt Public Health Research, uh, legal scholars Thomas McGarry and Wendy Wagner wrote the following The most important thing upper level, upper level policymakers can do to prevent public misunderstanding of their attempts to incorporate scientific advice into the decision making process is to be candid about the extent to which their final decisions rest on science and the extent to which policy considerations fill the gaps left by the scientific uncertainties. I believe by this measure, the final draft assessment does the public a disservice, and nothing uh, embodies 
this more than this, the, the employment of the phrase widespread systemic impacts, as you've heard other speakers say this morning. Uh, this, this phrase is proven contentious precisely because it papers over the gaps left by the scientific uncertainties in the assessment. Uh, these scientific uncertainties and inherent, inherent limitations are, are made quite clear in the assessment. Uh, the, the phrase was employed as somewhat of a, uh, a threshold, right? It's a, a multi-dimensional threshold for each of the, the uh, dimensions of, of impacts that have been identified. Uh, and it's beyond this threshold, beyond this threshold, uh, concern would presumably otherwise be, be triggered. Uh, and yet, this phrase is meaningless. Uh, it's only defined implicitly as being above and beyond existing levels of damage. Uh, and if this is done, one can only imagine, in order to dismiss, dismiss this damage as nothing but collateral damage. Uh, as it stands, the result of the agency's artifice with this phrase is that Oil and gas corporations and big banks succeed in projecting their vision for the future, and that is decades more drilling and fracking to extract as much unconventional oil and gas as possible. Not only will this mean more spills and leaky wells that compromise drinking water resources, more air pollution, more problems for, for landowners affected, uh, but it will also continue to destabilize the climate on which we all depend. I believe, as, as drafted, the assessment paves the way for that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. McMillan. I'm informed that Mr. Pafala is not here. At least two speakers. I think we'll 